across Texas. The issue is. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. And I'm Rudy Koski in Austin. And this is Texas. The issue is. On their second attempt, House Republicans in Congress successfully impeached DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. I talked to Texas Congressman Chip Roy about if he will be removed from office and why Republicans felt it was necessary. Mayorkas deserved to be impeached because he violated his oath to the Constitution. Uh, he failed to take care to see that the laws are faithfully executed as the Constitution requires. Um, he lied to me under oath. Uh, when he said that they have operational control of the border and he looked straight at the statute that I put in front of him and he said, uh, yes, we do. And then he later tried to back away from that. Do you think there's even a, a likelihood, a real likelihood that he will be removed from office in the Senate? The American people also get to hear this. And uh, every one of those members of the Senate are gonna have to go answer for it. And if they're comfortable answering no, then they can go defend that. That's the way the system works. But impeachment, remember, it's like it's like indicting somebody to grand jury. It's not exactly the same. Let's be clear, this is political and it's and it's legal both. But it's like an indictment. It, you know, should you not indict just because you're afraid that the jury may not convict? Um, that's not how it works, right? The House is supposed to present the articles of impeachment, send them over to the Senate, and say this is why we think this guy did something worthy of trial, and you guys go decide. Was the impeachment worth it? Will it be worth it? Does it that doesn't fix the problem on the border, correct? Well, impeaching Secretary Mayorkas won't immediately solve the problem at the border, no doubt. I've introduced legislation to do it. I've fought to get HR2 passed. I'm doing everything I know how to use to use the power of the purse to force change. The administration refuses to listen. But the reason that impeaching Mayorkas is important is he is the guy that has been heading this up. He is the face of it. He is the leading decision maker. He's the one that has made these calls. Like right now they're talking about, you know, releasing people from custody and, and shrinking ICE enforcement. They accused Border Patrol agents of whipping Haitian migrants, which turned out to be blatantly false. And it was very clear that the secretary knew it was false based on all the information that's been presented. Those things matter. And it matters that the American people see us do our job and, and, and use the tools that the founders gave us to check the executive branch. That's what we did. That's why it's important. Let's go back to ICE. You mentioned that uh, there's been reports of a $700 million budget shortfall, considerations reportedly of reducing the number of beds for detainees, which would result releasing people. Do you think if that does happen, if that goes through, is that an impeachable offense for the president in your eyes? Or do you think this is still uh, Alejandro Mayorkas issue? Well, look, the buck stops with the president of the United States. And, uh, you know, if, if you can impeach my orcas for a failure to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, you can impeach Joe Biden for failing to take care that, that the laws be faithfully executed. The president knows what he's doing. He's doing it intentionally. Uh, or he's certainly allowing the people around him to make the decisions. Uh, but the buck stops with the president of the United States. He is the head of the executive branch. They are flouting the law, ignoring the law. Uh, failing to, you know, carry out the laws, and in doing so, they are endangering the American people, particularly Texans, particularly our children. President Trump did not want a, a border plan to be passed, or at least criticized the one that passed out the Senate, did not pass in the House. Do you think that's a good strategy heading into this election season of shooting down some type of compromise instead of just trying to have a compromise? Well, first of all, uh, former President Trump didn't say that he didn't want to have legislation to fix the border. He said he didn't want to have that legislation to fix the border. That's a very material difference. The legislation that the Senate was putting forward was flawed. It was going to embrace the mass migration policies of the Biden administration, which was going to cement into policy permanently some of those things, which means you're going to actually weaken a future president from being able to enforce the law. That makes no sense. And it was going to do so to set some sort of cap at around 5,000 a day. So it's kind of like saying, oh, oh, well, you know, we used to try to enforce the law. When President Trump left, we were doing a pretty good job, 30,000 a month. Then we just said, okay, let's just ratchet it up to 300,000 a month. So that's like saying, okay, I'm going to say I'm going to hit you in the head 10 times. And then I tell you what, I'm going to offer you a great deal that says I'll only hit you in the head five times. That's ridiculous. We don't want that. We want to make sure we're doing our job to secure the border. It should be zero. That's actually what our law calls for today. If you come here illegally, you're supposed to be detained. You're supposed to be fully detained. Adjudicate a claim if you claim some sort of asylum. You have a legitimate fear of persecution for your religious or political beliefs. And then, if not, you're removed. Rudy Koski, what did you think of that interview? What's your one word? 
<laughs> yeah, pretty strong words there from the congressman. Uh, you know, this all feels like being trapped in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. So my word, vertigo. All right. Greg Grugan, what about you? <laughs> I'm just glad Rudy didn't get my word, which is theater, the political kind. All right. Well, we'll have much to discuss on the other end of this break. The Fox Texas trio is back. Rudy Koski, you get the first take at this. Now, Republicans, they want an impeachment. They got their wish. Will voters care more about the impeachment of the EHS secretary or will they care about a no deal in Congress? Stephen, I don't think most voters know who Mayorkas is, so the impeachment trial will most likely be a short-run political theater production in the Senate. So I'm borrowing Greg's word there. Well, what I'm hearing is hardline Republicans and Democrats will watch the trial, and they will not be the deciding factor in the November election. Moderates and independents, they're going to be the key, right? Uh, that's why we're already seeing the Democrats trying to spin the failed Senate border plan into something that it's not. But Republican strategists seem to be worried about that spin, that it's working. I'm hearing that right now. And that GOP party leaders are too focused on Trump as well as being obsessed with destroying each other, like right here in Texas, where Congressman Chip Roy has even been called a rhino. So uh, it's uh, makes more than, you know, it's enough to make your head spin with uh, political vertigo. <laughs> Greg, Republicans called for a border bill. They got one. They didn't like it. Will that hurt them? Look, Stephen, it's become a reality of contemporary American politics that no one gets any points from the radicalized base of either party for crafting or supporting anything that resembles compromise. It's all or nothing. Anything less is labeled a betrayal and a sellout. Now, that said, Congressman Roy has a point because the proposal which emerged from the Senate made very little, if any, change to current Biden policy. In other words, it increased funding for border security, but didn't shut a door that's been more or less wide open for the past three years. Even Republicans who were initially willing to consider interim progress over perfection openly criticized the Senate proposal as just a head fake by the president who has no intention of stopping illegal immigration. And gentlemen, that just feeds the so-called replacement theory alleged by many on the hard right who claim Democrats are importing future support as they lose more and more American blue collar workers. Rudy, Democrats picked up a congressional seat, it being a special election, albeit, but they picked up a seat in New York, a seat that turned red two years ago. And one of the main topics was the border. Should this worry Republicans that a Democrat won a seat? You know, Stephen, a special election is a different kind of animal. You know, there were a lot of factors in that race beyond the typical low voter, voter turnout that happens. First of all, the Democrat who won was a very familiar name to the voters there. And the political stink that Santos left behind was so bad, I don't even think Santa Claus as a Republican candidate would have won that race. Here's the red flag, which I touched on a moment ago. The top GOP issues remain crime, education, the border. The Democrats are now trying to flip the border narrative. The New York race looks like a good test run for them with their candidate saying he most likely will be a border hawk and the Republican who lost spoke out against that Senate border plan. The Democrats are also still trying to attract moderates. They're doing a good job attracting independents, doing a good job, saying Republicans have gone too far on abortion. So I'm hearing alarm bells going off within the GOP, Stephen, big alarm bells. Greg, really quick, is New York a predictor of what's to come or is it unique? Stephen, here's what I'll say. When a Democrat runs away from the Democratic president and wins, that's significant wherever it happens. Now, as for November, the smartest people I know believe the nationwide concern over border security and nonstop illegal immigration will be more than enough juice for Republicans to hold their slim control of the House. As for the Senate, the Democrats have a very tough road to hoe, considering Joe Manchin is retiring with his West Virginia seat likely to flip Republican. That means to retain Senate control, the party of Joe Biden and his open border policy will have to run the table in nearly every closely contested Senate race. Places like Montana, Ohio, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nevada. My guess is the Democrats in those races start with a handicap. All right, that's all the time we have to see this episode or any of our past ones. Go to our station's YouTube channels. And keep that conversation going by hitting us up on social media.
And we'll be back next week with another hot topic. In the meantime, let us know what you think the issue is.